So, good day everyone. Our today's physics meetup speaker is one of the most distinguished and brilliant Filipina scientists of today. She started her journey as a physicist and obtained her BS physics degree with flying colors at the Ateneo de Manila University as summa cum laude. She also got her diploma in high energy physics in ICTP, Abdus Salam International Center for Theoretical Physics in Trieste, Italy. After that, she got her PhD from Princeton University in the United States. Within her first year at Princeton, she received the Chambliss Astronomy Achievement Student Award from the American Astronomical Society for her research on obscured quasars. And she was just 22 years old at that time. And later on, she received uh, her postdoctoral work at Kavli Institute for Cosmological Physics in the University of Chicago. So she is a Filipina scientist, an educator, one of Asia's rising scientists. She has been called as the Filipina who proved Einstein right after her work as part of her PhD research confirming Albert Einstein's theory of relativity on a cosmic scale in year 2010. And not only that, but she is also a renowned science communicator, giving various talks, interviews, and workshops about science. So, and even hosting Science Says, a Filipino-based science education TV series produced by Knowledge Channel. So upon returning to the Philippines, she pursued a career in data science and worked in various companies, including, including Smart Communications, Research and Development in United Health Group, and Ayala Corporation. Currently, she serves as a Practice Director and Data Science Analytics at Zilip Solutions Incorporation and acts as an independent data consultant. Well, this upcoming August, she is set to join the National Institute of Physics in the University of the Philippines, Diliman, as an associate professor. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, and we present to you our speaker for today, Dr. Reina Bel Reyes. A round of virtual applause, please. So ma'am. Ah, cool. Thanks so much, Samuel and Dr. Casas, and uh, of course, uh, all the organizers uh, for bringing us all together this afternoon. Uh, it's uh, uh, quite an experience. Uh, uh, first, uh, first time I'm giving a career talk uh, online. So thank you for being here and thank you for um, uh, sharing this uh, space. And I look forward to um, yeah to, to the rest of the afternoon. And uh, we have ample time for uh, Q and A. Uh, and so um, we'll uh, no, we'll uh, we'll. Uh, We'll uh, we'll make the best out of it. Let's 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 make the best out of it. Uh, of course, uh, uh, it's also nice to see all the uh, young faces, young and bright faces, uh, and the young at heart. So thank you for uh, keeping your videos on. Uh, it's great to see the community. Um, we all don't fit in uh, one uh, grid, but uh, I'm uh, I'm. Um, um, browsing to see everyone. Oh, and pa si Einstein. Thank you, Sir Einstein, for uh, for joining us. <laughs> um, and uh, from so many parts of the country. So um, it's really a unique experience. So um, thank you for uh, for um, yeah for 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 doing this and for doing this uh, regularly for this community. Um, yeah, and of course, uh, hopefully, some uh, one day, uh, not too far in the future, we'll get a chance to visit uh, in person as well, uh, and um, and cross paths with many of you in some way or another. But in the meantime, uh, we have a way to connect virtually. So, uh, so happy to uh, meet everyone here. Um, okay, so I prepared some uh, uh, some. Uh, uh, slides to uh, share my journey so far. So uh, it's like uh, uh, <laughs> I took the chance to 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 um, I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's quite a quite a, a time we're 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 living through. Um, so it's also a good opportunity to um, parang to pause and to look back. Um, and then also look forward to the future. So uh, we'll share some um, some of my uh, stories from my journey so far. Hope that may mapulot uh, kayo, especially those who are still just starting out. 
Uh, and then, um, um, of course, uh, to uh, prompt uh, questions uh, or um, other um, um, uh, comments that you might have uh, that we can um, uh, take up during the uh, Q&A portion. Okay, so we'll share my screen. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm Reina, I'm a physicist, uh, among other things, uh, but it's, uh, um, it's really uh, at the core uh, <laughs> uh, who I am. And I think many of us uh, can relate. So, uh, but um, uh, it's interesting because in so many, uh, so many ways to become a, to, to, to become a physicist, so many, so many uh, fields uh, to pursue and so many uh, related, related areas to, to work on. So, uh, each of us, um, each of us, each of your guests here is a physics meetup, and each of you uh, are um, know, creating your own, creating our own um, paths uh, to uh, which is our facets, different facets of uh, what a physicist is or who a physicist uh, can be. Uh, so, uh, um, yeah, that's how I see it. But the, the sharing parang gives us all. Uh, one uh, view of one 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 path, uh, and that's still ongoing. And this crosses with the path of many others, uh, and that's the uh, value of being part of a community, um, and not only um, in within our country, but actually you're, we're part of a global community of uh, scientists and physicists in particular. So that's a particular gift of of, uh, of this path that we're all um, taking on. Um, so, um, yeah, this is an artist's depiction of uh, the different uh, things I've uh, gone through uh, in the recent Symmetry Magazine article. So it is very nicely done and uh, uh, it even looks like me. So uh, for, the, uh, for this talk, I'll actually go through uh, and tell some stories about these uh, things um, um, from uh, high school to a uh, career. Uh, and uh, and the way I, I uh, visualized it or present or presenting it is through this. Uh, uh, it's actually a, a new thing because I just made it, but uh, it's inspired by a wait but why um, article a while back. So uh, if you're not familiar, you can check out waitbutwhy.com. Uh, this guy, Tim Orban, makes uh, really uh, uh, interesting and thought-provoking posts with uh, usually with visual. So he's a very visual uh, thinker and also visual artist. But this one, I don't need to be an artist because I can make it in Excel. <laughs> so, but so interesting. So interesting idea is that you can um, represent a life uh, in months. So in in his post, he actually made one uh, by decade, by 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 year, by months, and by weeks. Uh, so for here, I chose uh, a life in months. So the idea is each grid cell is a month, and you can see here um, that uh, we have um, um, three years per row. Uh, 1 to 12, 1 to 12, 1 to 12, right? And then going down, then you have um, essentially a lifespan that's uh, uh, 81 uh, years. Uh, if we if we um, lucky enough to, to live to our 80s. Um, and then you, so you can um, mark every decade of a life. Uh, so here, I was born on March. <laughs> so, yung zero day zero ko, zero years old is uh, March 1984. And then uh, plus 10, diba? plus 10, plus 10. Uh, today, you're actually at uh, uh, this point, July 2020, where I am 36 years old. 
and um, and so you can see visually diba, where I am in a life so uh, around um, halfway um, and then uh, yeah to if if let's say up to 80 years old that's March 2064. So of course every life will have their own um, timeline like this and um, uh, and then of course you can make your own if you're, you're interested. Um, and then uh, actually interesting in the blog, uh, he actually made uh, charts for like famous people. So for example, imagine Einstein's biography, like you can see when, uh, when he discovered special relativity, when general, when the yung kanyang uh, Anis Mira, yung miraculous year where, which was 1905 and then general relativity in, 1915, when he moved to Princeton, right? so you can see, parang the canvas of a life, um, visually uh, in this way. So uh, we're gonna fill this in, um, and then just uh, tell the story for each. All right, that's the that's the filled in uh, so far because we're here today, um, and then. Uh, we don't know what the future will hold, so it's gray. <laughs> uh, neutral color, but but may, may mga arrows ah. Someone is uh, putting arrows, but uh, anyway, you see the visual picture. Um, and um, we start with uh, early years, uh, zero to uh, four, like before school or before nursery. Um, and uh, we don't remember, I think, don't think most of us, I think, uh, don't remember early years. Um, I, 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 I'm sparing you my baby pictures, <laughs> but I put here uh, this interesting uh, set of baby books. So you would think that if you're a physicist, that they're going to yung books mo nung bata ka. But actually, uh, no, hindi naman, di ba? Pero interestingly, uh, these books are now available, Quantum Physics for Babies, uh, but my what I But my, my, what I was going to say is like all babies are actually uh, scientists, very natural scientists. Um, uh, there's this uh, good book uh, or, where um, scientists studied babies uh, and then um, showed that they're actually natural scientists and they they do, uh, they do, they observe, diba? observe and then predict and then do experiments. And over time, that's how we learn about the world around us. Um, and in a way, um, a lot of us uh, outgrow, out, outgrow this. And the challenge, in one challenge and one pleasure of being scientists is that you keep that childlike, um, uh, uh, childlike uh, way of seeing the world. Uh, and a constant challenge for us to to keep to keep that alive, that curiosity and that uh, openness. Um, okay, so uh, that's my uh, sharing there. Uh, next is uh, kindergarten to elementary school. So I near a class picture, and uh, that's me. Uh, I went actually to a um, uh, Chinese uh, school. Uh, um, and um, that's at the time, um, even uh, outside school, uh, got really uh, interested in astronomy, uh, like many kids, right? Like the planets, the stars, the galaxies, black holes, like it's, it's so uh, out of this world, out of everyday experience. So um, it was fascinating. Uh, and I also, uh, got my dad, my my dad to uh, buy me a, a telescope uh, and just look through uh, essentially the moon <laughs> uh, in the city. Uh, but um, but in that uh, that fascination, that interest um, was ano naman, was uh, uh, fostered. Uh, and in school, um, science and math were my favorite subjects. And science and quiz big and so. Uh, in a way, uh, my interest in science showed uh, very early. Um, and then uh, I learned about the special high school, uh, Philippine Science High School, um, where if you're interested in science, you, you can uh, apply and be a scholar and 
uh, spend time with the other uh, geeks. So, um, so I asked my parents to to uh, inquire. So and uh, yun nga, I'm lucky they're open-minded enough. I, enough. I took the exams and uh, and passed. So I spent my formative years at Philippine Science High School in Diliman. Uh, they're now, uh, I think, uh, a campus for each region. Uh, so it's now a whole family, a whole system of um, Pisay schools. Um, and uh, I visited a uh, few of them, uh, met the scholars, and um, gave uh, career talks and other uh, science talks. So um, um, I hope to be able to visit uh, all the campuses in my lifetime. So hopefully nga when travel, when you can travel again. Uh, but it's very formative and I credit the Philippine science, the teachers there and the education there for giving me really strong foundations in, in, uh, in, in, in physics uh, and later on research and a lot of, um, 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 a lot of uh, graduates uh, can attest to that. Uh, but of course you can come from anywhere. I'm just saying that the, that uh, at least the intent of the school, uh, which is to to uh, to train and to foster our scientists, uh, uh, is there and that's alive and it's growing and um, um, and um, and yeah and I I, I uh, and I find myself still uh, I below I mean I'm happy to be part of the community of uh, Philippine Science High School uh, alumni and. Um, and uh, okay, yeah, this is our, I know, the, the, the facade of the building, but it'll actually now, it's actually now uh, reconstructed it's because of K-12, they need more, we now need more, I know, uh, more rooms. So now it's a, a higher, higher rise building, but it will, this will always be uh, the precise in our memories. So what's the Pisay in Central Mindanao? The nearest is in Davao, and we also ah, the... also Central in Danao del Norte, Central Mindanao campus. And Central Mindanao campus. From Philippine Science, na andito din. Oh yeah, and hi, shout shout out, and uh, and hope maka and hope maimbita in the future. <laughs> yeah, we've been to either. Well. Okay, and next, I and then um, I guess I guess part of this nga din is yung um yung um story of increasing specialization, right, in our modern world. So since in high school, that's where I discovered that uh, out of all the sciences, I uh, feel most strongly in, about uh, physics. That's my uh, favorite uh, subject. So uh, it made uh, sense to uh, major in physics in, in college. So in college, you have to choose na major. Uh, and then even further on in graduate school, uh, then you, um, you even further specialize into particular uh, research topics. So um, I went to Ateneo. Uh, that's the power hall is the, where the Department of Physics is. Uh, and um, Continued my uh, my learning and deepening of uh, uh, training in, in in physics as well as in other of course in other um, you know, in college meron pa rin yung mga general education like uh, philosophy um, literature history uh, but of course you now have your majors and then a milestone there is in your, in the your final years when you, you make a thesis uh, I had the opportunity to submit my work at the SPP, Sumang so Pisikan ng Pilipinas uh, conference, uh, which is held uh, yearly at that time. Hindi ko na mahanap yung poster noong year na yon. Um, pero, um, I mean, wala na yung poster sa website. So, but I found this was, uh, last year, so was actually uh, in Bohol. So that year, uh, 2005, when I uh, presented, that was also in Bohol. So, uh, umikot na siya. Um, and this year, um, I actually also submitted a paper. Unfortunately, I got canceled, but uh, I hear that they are uh, going to make it fully online. So um, hope yun nga, uh, we see a lot of you there also online. Um, 
in October, I believe. So our first uh, virtual conference for SPP. Um, and for everyone here who's ano, uh, who hasn't been, I think yeah, that's part of, part of the journey of a physics uh, a physicist in the, in the Philippines to be part of the uh, SPP conference, at least one one of these conferences. So, um. So, um, so yeah, so that's a uh, parang mas uh, I guess I'll just mention that the topic was um, interestingly, uh, special relativity uh, formulated in uh, geometric algebra, which is uh, is a different um, uh, algebra, uh, Clifford algebra, where you can express all uh, four Lorentz equations by x, y, z. Um, and time uh, dimensions uh, in one equation. So, parang nako collapse niya. Uh, so, th that was uh, the work. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, and, I, and, and, and I wanted to mention that my uh, advisor, um, my advisor, uh, then, si, sir, uh, si Dr. Uh, Pope or Kirino Sugon, Pope yung nickname niya. Is now, I believe, a lecturer at Ateneo de Davao as uh, the space engineering program. So, with Father Dan McNamara, who was our uh, department chair for a long time in Ateneo. Um, so, yeah, actually, the physics community is, uh, uh, for better or for worse, a small world. So, uh, we, we, we just take advantage of, of, of that because we know uh, everyone, and this is good that we, uh, we keep crossing paths. Okay, and then now the next milestone is after college. Um, at least it was for me very clear that I uh, want to go to graduate school uh, to pursue uh, uh, the career further. Uh, and um, at the time, it was also very clear that I wanted to apply uh, abroad uh, to, uh, in, uh, to do this. So I applied. So this, uh, my, Right after college, I applied for uh, the ICTP uh, um, diploma program. So you can, uh, um, they actually have um, several diploma programs where they take scholars from um, low and middle income countries like, like the Philippines, Vietnam, um, Brazil, uh, Mexico, Palestine, Chile, Dominican Republic of Congo. And uh, what's really cool there is yeah, you get to meet a lot. So parang in one class, uh, parang each, parang every, you're parang kang UN, you represent your country. Parang uh, but uh, it's a unique and very uh, formative experience then, not just for the science, for the, um, for the physics, but also for the parang opening up the world and other cultures and um, developing relationships with uh, people coming from uh, different parts of the world. Um, so that's uh, that's a year, and from there, uh, parang we get prepared and we get um, get the time also to uh, prepare for applying for different PhD programs. Uh, so a ICTP remains to be a very uh, active and. Um, uh, uh, what do you say? Attractive place to, to go. Uh, it's right uh, next to the uh, Adriatico Sea. Uh, and they actually hold a lot of uh, summer schools. So for, let's, let's say like this one, uh, for a few weeks, um, you, um, you, um, you learn with uh, other um, scientists from all over the world again and with uh, inv lectures invited again from all over the world. Uh, and um, you get to have this fun experience uh, in a parang shorter, uh, shorter uh, time, usually during the summers. Uh, and I believe they're still running, they're still running this. Uh, and uh, when I last checked, they made uh, some of the schools uh, fully online now. So, um, it becomes even more accessible in a way, right? So 
I invite you to check those out. And the diploma program is you know, a longer commitment, so one year. Uh, but uh, then, so parang kayo yung mainstays doon. But it's good because you always get this steady stream of visitors doing the schools and parang as, as visiting fellows. So we get to meet uh, a lot of people coming through as well. Um, so for me, it was a stepping stone to a PhD, and I applied to um, different uh, programs in the U.S. and got really lucky to be um, uh, to be accepted at Princeton University's astrophysics dip, uh, astrophysics program. Um, so that's where I flew to next. Um, that lucky part, actually, uh, I, I, uh, in, uh, I. Yeah, interesting and important part of the story is that my advisor in ICTP, see, uh, his name is Uros Seljak. Uh, he's a Slovenian. So I think that's one of the reasons like that he moved to ICTP because it's in the border of Slovenia. But he happened to be uh, formerly uh, from Princeton uh, Physics Department. Um, and he worked on um, uh, cosmological cosmology essentially uh, cosmological as uh, cosmo cosmology so i um i um i worked with him and we did a we had the, like a mini thesis also as part of the program and worked on a, a, a simple uh, cosmology theoretical cosmology problem dealing with the cosmological constant uh, uh, the uh, the coincidence that it, at this time the, the cosmological constant is becoming um, uh, dominant at this time. Um, so um, so he happened to be yeah, colleagues with the with the professors at Princeton, and when they uh, were reviewing my application, they actually uh, contacted him and asked uh, for his. Uh, uh, assessment, parang ganun, diba? that's how they, they assess a potential candidates. Uh, so at the time, uh, we haven't met yet, so he, he actually emailed me and then we met. And then from the grapevine, I heard that parang he asked my professors about my uh, performance in their classes, ganyan. And that's really parang the weight talaga of uh, recommendations from people you trust, right? Uh, and so I guess the lesson there uh, is, yeah, that's why it's important to develop uh, to develop our relationships with our mentors, with our professors, uh, and um, and these carry weight uh, when we uh, apply uh, to our um, you know, respective programs. Okay, so uh, the PhD program in um, in 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 prison, typically in the U.S., uh, is a combined master's and PhD program. So you can enter without a masters, uh, without any masters units, as in my case, uh, because uh, essentially you get a masters uh, before you get a PhD. So it's a five-year program. So it's uh, around two years of classes, um, and uh, you do a PhD candidacy. If you, uh, of course, uh, exam. If you pass that, then you continue on to your thesis. Uh, and then you can finish in uh, four to five years, typically five years. And then the uh, uh, and then you get a master's along the way. But it just so happens that yeah, that's not why you're there. So parang the expectation is that you finish the, the PhD. So that's the system they have. Um, and it, and it, you know, it worked naman. Uh, although now I realize for the, the this coming generation, parang five years is parang too long, parang uh, too big a commitment. So I don't eh, parang you can split it up into two plus three or three plus two. I don't know. But at that time, I was so enamored that I just want to do this. So um, five years was um, was uh, was 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 fine. Well, I didn't was that wasn't that much of an issue then. Um, but yeah, interesting how times change, you know. Um, um, and um, then I'll share also yung particular uh, um, research training that we we get. So in Princeton, the interesting uh, in Princeton astrophysics, this is the the, the department, uh, Peyton Hall, um, 
which is uh, actually a small department like in our in every year they only get uh, four to five graduate students so yung batch namin we're just four to five compared to the physics department which is yung kapit bahay nito which is a big building so parang sila di ba buong batch would be let's say um, 30 to 50 students uh, but of course they also have more professors ganyan um, pero here there's that parang feeling na yun nga parang you're you're a small community, uh, and then also there are many postdocs. So actually, there are more postdocs than PhD students. And then of course, the PhD students uh, uh, get offices in the basement. So my basement to, <laughs> and then you uh, kind of, and then the professors of course get these uh, nice uh, of windows with offices. Uh, but what they do is that in the first two years, I said, but there's uh, there are classes. Um, so you take classes, but at the same time, there's something called semester projects. So Semester projects actually a research project uh, that's uh, expected that you write a paper uh, out of it, or that I didn't expect it, but the idea is that uh, it can result to a paper. So, uh, and the rule is you cannot do it with the same professor. So every semester you find a supervisor, and then uh, the next semester, and then you work with that on that project uh, with, with that professor. And then on the second semester, uh, you start a new project with another professor. But of course, hindi pa tapos yung first project kasi it never naman, it hindi naman talaga semester project is like two years, di ba? one to two years to write a paper. So now you have two projects. So they actually force you to learn <laughs> to multitask uh, and to manage all your responsibilities. Um, and the idea there is also that you get, a, uh, you get, um, you get, yeah, you get, you get, uh, experience you get experience working with different um, professors different kinds of scientists actually the way they think and their fields are also different and then by the time uh, you end your second year you work on four different projects uh, hopefully you finished uh, one or two um, uh, and wrote them up into a paper and um, the requirement for candidacy you know, to move on to the phd is that you submitted at least one paper out of those uh, four projects and usually it should be the one you started in the first year because you last but <laughs> the thing is uh, the nature paper uh, that I'll talk about in a bit uh, that he talked about with the Einstein um, confirmation um, is actually a semester project uh, that uh, Urosh who we met in ICTP uh, suggested uh, because we were still in collaborating through his collab through his postdoc who was at uh, uh, IAS, the Institute of Advanced Studies, um, where Einstein uh, stayed actually. So Einstein did not, uh, so it's actually separate and in, independent from Princeton University, but it's in the same town, in the same uh, neighborhood. But it's a purely research institute. So they have postdocs as well. So, um, so, so the story is um, he. Uh, we were looking for uh, possible projects, and he, he, he gave. He came up with a list and emailed it. So at that time he was in. Where was he? I don't know where he was, but he was not in Princeton. He was somewhere else. Uh, um, sent a list of potential things to work on uh, and then one of them was this uh, use the data from the Sloan Digital Galaxy Sloan Digital Sky Survey uh, uh, choosing the uh, um, luminous red galaxies to uh, to measure this uh, probe of gravity called E sub G that was um, uh, proposed in a in a theoretical paper by theoretical uh, cosmologists who said that uh, we, are, we, we propose uh, that if you measure these things in a real survey, you can, um, but you can potentially distinguish between different theories of gravity um, uh, in the large scale, which is uh, these megaparsec scales uh, of the distances between galaxies. Uh, so, uh, so that jumped out of me. So essentially, I just said, let's do that, right? That's interesting. <laughs> and 
and then and then we did it. Uh, so I guess that's how parang things um, come together. At that point, the business scientists or as scientists, we we read papers, we see what's happening, and then we make the connection and we say we actually have the data to do this test. Um, and um, and um, um, and you do the work, uh, and then you, uh, of course, yeah. Uh, usually, we don't have time. Diba? Parang y- when you recount these things, you you the, you you gloss over the details, you gloss over the, the ups and downs, diba? the the hard part. In the end, you oh, and, and when you read the paper, diba? you just see the result, diba? you see, and it's very uh, impersonal, diba? of course, it's very objective, very very. Um, professional, like we derived blah 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 blah, and we found that blah 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 blah, ganyan. And then, and then, dun lang sa dulo meron parang acknowledgement. So, dun mo lang ma feel na medyo may tao behind it na parang we think, ganyan. ganyan. Pero even yun parang very, ano, actually interesting yun, yung mga makikita ka na interesting sa acknowledgement sa yung ibang they put a personal touch. Pero usually din na parang this was funded by ganyan ganyan ganyan. Um, but, but um, scientists are people, you know. But but that's part of our that's part of our craft, right? That's part of our craft or technical skills uh, to 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 cover that in a paper. Uh, but the actual um, the actual, right, uh, process of science is not dry. It's really it's really and not not step one, step two, step three, step four, right? I mean, because otherwise then it's not research, right? Otherwise, uh, it's just following uh, uh, a script. Um, so the beauty of the work is really that um, you know, you're in this um, in this realm where um, it's it's not it's 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 not like you don't know anything, but you know something. You know that um, this uh, has a, a pro, uh, good. Pro, I mean that if you that if you take this data and we make these calculations, you will get a result uh, in the, in a broad sense, right? But in particular, how you actually do it and what will come out uh, is a process that's uh, more messy and more um, iterative. Uh, but eventually, but but given the right you know direction, you also progress, and then at the end you come out to the result that um, that uh, wouldn't have been um, uh, would, that wouldn't exist if you did not do the, that work, right? And so that's the that's the work. Uh, what you see is the end product, which is in this case uh, this chart, uh, which shows you the actual measurements of E sub G in the, uh, you see the circles, the black circles with the error bars. So, you know, it's a measurement because every measurement has an uncertainty and we try our best to, um, to estimate that uncertainty um, and show it visually here in error bars. So you can see after the error bars here are pretty large. Um, and uh, large compared to what? Compared to what you're trying to distinguish. So here, what we're trying to distinguish are different theories of gravity now represented by the bands, the colored bands. So you can see uh, here, uh, GR, general relativity, the um, our, uh, sorry, our theory of gravity is the red band. Oops. oops. Wait lang ah. Hindi ko kasi siya nakikita. How do I? Ay, si Einstein. Okay. So, it's, uh, it's the red band. Tama naman, di ba? Red yung GR. Oh. <laughs> red yung GR. Uh, so, you can see that's um, what the theory predicts uh, the E sub G would be. That's the range. And then, you have an alternative theory of gravity. Uh, called f of r it's actually a set of uh, set of um, um, theories where you modify gr so some of you are familiar with the uh, the uh, uh, formulation for gr has a as an r the the ricci scalar um, and so gr there's a a fixed metric. I mean, there's a for the metric. There's a, a formula for the metric uh, expressed in R, and um, you can modify that uh, by using any a different function of R. Kaya 
the name of that theory is F of R. <laughs> diba? Galing yung mga fishes. So, uh, F of R theories are, are ways to modify general relativity uh, that affects only uh, the cosmological scales. Um, because you want to preserve everything in the small scales, like on uh, Earth and solar system scales, where general relativity has been tested to so... I, I think the... I think general relativity is the most precisely uh, confirmed um, test in terms of the number of decimal places. Um, so the trick, the theorist trick is how do you preserve that, but then have something change in the large scales, in the galak, in the cosmological scales to um, <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah, pero to to, pero to yeah, so then you lang if you get but it's actually to to reproduce the accelerated expansion of the universe, uh, which in uh, standard cosmology we're attributing to something called dark energy, which uh, uh, which uh, actually is a mystery. <laughs> we don't know what it is, guys. It's dark energy. But if you put that cosmological constant in the equation, it works with GR. Uh, and then, but there's a theoretical puzzle, right? Um, and one way to reproduce the same effect is to modify gravity. And so this is the context for a test such as this. Although in general, of course, uh, any any theory in physics, about we actually test experimentally. That's the man, I think, uh, uh, universal. All right, and then there's another third um, set of theories called um, TEVES, which is short for tensor vector scalar uh, theories represented here by the green band, but actually uh, even the theory theoretical um, predictions here are uh, hard to do. And so this is just from one paper and that's actually an active area of research. What, how you, for example, what that theory would say is G would be. Um, and, um, and yeah, and then what I would say is that it's more complicated because because it's add, it added a vector component to the theory, uh, whereas general relativity just has the scalar and tensor components. This one adds a vector component, kaya siya tevis. Um, but uh, you know, as far as we're concerned, uh, it's a theory that should give a prediction. Uh, and we just got this from a paper, and that paper. Um, Or that the, those authors estimated E sub G to be a smaller, a lower number from the best. But it's really a proof of concept saying that if you actually do this measurement in a, a more precise way and make the error bar smaller, you can uh, potentially distinguish between these different theories uh, just from our, our uh, astronomical from our astronomical observations. Uh, which is uh, uh, really a powerful and amazing thing. Um, even if it doesn't help us in any way in the world and cannot help us with the pandemic, unfortunately. Uh, but this is the beauty of science that given our, uh, no, given this, uh, these methodologies and these tools, uh, we're able to discover things about the universe. And which is not to say naman, that, you know, in fact, science is also our biggest uh, tool, our biggest uh, uh biggest um um chance for for overcoming the 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 the, the pandemic uh with our vaccines and treatments and um and um non pharmaceutical interventions um but um that's uh, uh another discussion um but in general, yeah, the science is a tool. So it depends on what you, you investigate, then um, then you you uh, you um, you specialize in that field and you uh, can come up with new knowledge, uh, new insights, uh, new methods, and new uh, new um, treatments, let's say, uh, or techniques um, uh, that that then you share with the the rest of the world. I mean, that's the that's the that's the good scientist. That's the good scientist. I know. Uh, 
Okay, but then, yeah, this is amazing because uh, so many, so many centuries, um, so many, one century after Einstein's uh, create, uh, developed the theory of general relativity, we're able to um, start um, confirming it on the largest scales with our uh, big data from astronomy. Uh, and it still holds. So uh, that's the power of uh, uh, physics for you, where you can write equations, and it covers the whole universe. And I think a lot of us were attracted to it um, because of this. Um, okay, so yeah, that's one particular example from my experience. And continuing on, um, uh, after your PhD, uh, you're in the next path, the uh, next. Uh, uh, part of the academic path is to is something called postdoctoral fellowships or postdoc postdoc for short, uh, which is uh, what uh, you get when you're <laughs> anyway postdoc. Si tapos ka na mag PhD. Uh, so it's actually uh, not uh, you're not a student anymore. PhD is like the highest degree you can get. Uh, but these are opportunities to do your uh, to deepen your research, to continue publishing, to collaborate with other academics um, before you become a prof professor or faculty um, faculty member. Um, that was uh, created because uh, there were too many there were were not enough slots. So, so may economics, of course, may economics and sociology of of of, of the profession as, as with any profession. But in any case, uh, for uh, astronomy, these are available and they are they run from two years to three years, uh, and then people get uh, uh, get um, get to um, get to move around different institutions and different um, universities uh, and keep applying every cycle. That's the, that's the career path. Um, so for me, I actually applied to several, yeah, several places uh, in the US and I got, uh, I, I, I chose to go to uh, the Cable Institute for Cosmological Physics at University of Chicago. They were part also of the, um, and Sloan Digital Sky Survey and this bigger survey that was being planned called the Dark Energy Survey or DES uh, with Fermilab, which is uh, also in uh, in the area. But actually, the US is so big, so actually you need to drive a long uh, drive to go get from University of Chicago to to Fermilab. But at least it's in the same uh, area. Um, and this is actually the old building. Uh, now they have a fancy glass uh, uh, high-rise building that they moved to, but this is the uh, uh, one we're in when I was there in 2011. All right, but uh, for me, uh, what happened is, oh, I guess, uh, Jung, uh, what happened is at this at this point I was. Also, is also when I was starting to think about uh, where I wanted to go or where I want to, to what I want to do in the future, and so this became also my time where I was uh, really um, deciding on whether to come back to the Philippines, uh, and so uh, and part of that was uh, visiting, but also uh, what became part of my journey also was this um, idea that uh, uh, that eventually. Uh, uh, that started small but grew and persisted is this idea of a uh, Pinoy scientist. So I actually started when I was a postdoc, uh, feeling uh, very far away from the country. But there was this idea of a Tumblr, Tumblr blog, uh, single serving Tumblr blog. <laughs> Medyo innovative pa yun, di ba? Parang layo na. Ngayon nasa TikTok na tayo. Pero noon, uh, there, uh, there was this... Uh, Tumblr blog called Looks Like Science. Looks Like Science. So the idea there was to feature different, uh, yeah, different profiles, different scientists, share their stories, and to debunk the stereotype that the scientists look like Einstein, essentially. So the point is that scientists are just people like us who happen to be uh, doing this. And then, uh, so the click yung idea na we need, uh, di ba, why not make one for Filipino scientists? Uh, so Pinoy scientists. To, to, to show nga, uh, that 
actually in, in our case, that yes, we exist. Diba? That they're actually scientists uh, who are Filipinos, Filipinas, and we're working in uh, the country, but also in different parts of the world. And you can get to know us and learn more about what we do uh, by, uh, yeah, by following us and, and sharing, by, by us sharing our stories and by others finding this in now in, in, in this space. Um, so yeah, I started with a few people, my friends, of course, the people I met and people I connected with while doing my uh, PhD and postdoc. Uh, and then uh, eventually, uh, uh, eventually grew to uh, now a Facebook page and an Instagram page where uh, the actual scientists take over the account uh, and share more uh, about what they do and their research and what they do for fun, etc. And even interact with the uh, with the readers, followers uh, via. Ako nga, hindi ko na alam. So uh, a, a younger co-moderator who volunteered uh, to do this uh, is uh, helping out. Parang they have you know, the stories and then there are polls and things like this. So um, I'll share the I'll share the links later. But it's uh, it's another way to connect with. Um, uh, with uh, uh, scientists uh, and um, uh, learn from their um, experiences. Uh, and in fact, I'm sure many of them will also be happy to to be part of this meetup uh, or in physics. But uh, this one is also more broad. So we get uh, scientists from all fields, uh, including biology, genomics, or latest one, um, chemistry, archaeology. So uh, uh, very uh, you get also to see the gamut of of the world of science. Um, okay, so I guess uh, yeah, that's part of the story. This was parang part of my connection, and actually, I think that the parang helped eventually solidify my decision uh, to to come back. So the next big milestone was really returning to the Philippines, uh, which was uh, in twenty fourteen, uh, and then I uh, joined Ateneo. Um, but also I wanted to highlight, uh, uh, remember looking at what pictures do I associate, it's really, it's really this, the the community, the, the connections and the way that I can share my story with others, um, really, uh, made it all, um, uh, parang ano ba, hindi naman worthwhile, but really made, Parang confirmed uh, that it was the right uh, decision for me. Um, so just chose a few from Facebook. Uh, this what uh, this is a few penis med and mga college students. Uh, this one was uh, special. It was at the Manila Planetarium. So I actually got to um, share my screen on the Planetarium dome. Uh, and um, and this one was is, is actually was on uh, no, at the SM Cinema of SM Iloilo that the JCI um, put together. No? It's crazy also because I was in the cinema giving a talk about uh, aliens and not the UFO kind. It's really the uh, scientific question of whether we are alone in the universe. So we covered cosmology, the Drake equation essentially, uh, and even uh, talked about yun nga, um, our own uh, existential um, uh, existential lifetime in a way which is parang now connected connecting to this uh, um, pandemic no it, it it didn't take it it doesn't take a meteor a meteor to uh, to stop everything uh, but this one actually we can we can uh, no, we can model through it's not a permanent um, permanent um, setback um, but um, but it's uh, um, <clears throat> it's quite significant, of course. Okay, so uh, yeah, so this is one to share that I'm happy that uh, yun, yeah, despite the pandemic and our inability to gather in this way, uh, that we are able to gather also uh, online uh, to this venue. Of course, it doesn't have the same uh, quite feel uh, yet, but. Um, we will, uh, know, we'll see, and hopefully now uh, with the interactions, we, we get more, uh, because now I'm, it's like I'm just talking on a screen. Uh, but I know that there are 223 apparently people here, so uh, that's great. So, so it's, it's like, uh, it's, yeah, we're, it's like more than the 
people in these pictures. Uh, maybe similar to this picture in the cinema in terms of number. So that's yeah, quite amazing. All right, and then uh, we're getting to near, 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 near past, uh, where the next milestone for me was actually a change. Uh, it's not typical of a scientist's uh, path, I, I would say, uh, but um, because of um, the nature of the work uh, in my astronomy research, I actually worked on data, um, images, but also you know um, statistical statistical analysis and modeling um, it coincided with the rise of this new field uh, that they're called they call data science uh, in the industry uh, which is um, which is um, quite interesting in fact because it's like a they they call it a science um, but it's not as but it's not physics, diba? physics is a science. Uh, but you know, magaling mag, mag, um, magaling mag, uh, mag, 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 term, mag term. So data science actually uh, using the tools from science towards uh, industry applications. Of course, also other applications, but the, the main, um, the history, um, and the main, uh, of course, the main um, use cases are, are with industry. Uh, so um, with a lot of reluctance, I was, um, I was convinced to move to industry. But again, no regrets. Uh, it's actually, again, opening up the world in a different way. And I feel like I'm in a unique position uh, I get to see both worlds and I get to have communities in both worlds. So um, I was able to, um, but again, you know, what's glossed over is that's actually a big transition, right? I never worked, if you see in my timeline, I never worked in my life. Uh, so I only started working when I worked. But it's like you work hard, but it's not work. Uh, but my first like nine to five job uh, was when I was 30, uh, 30. Um, because of my, uh, because of my, this, this, this usefulness of science, but the strange usefulness of science, you can use it uh, to make decisions. So, uh, uh, but maybe because now of my, and then uh, my, my um, academic background, I've always found opportunities and opportunities have found uh, me that to, um, to be involved in, 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 in education and learning. So for example, while I was in, with United Health Group, we actually started the, uh, the data science um, program, a data science program that trains uh, fresh graduates to become data scientists and be part, of, and then and then and join. We had actually hired by United Health Group and BPI. So, it's, so it was called BUDS because it was BPI United Health Group data science program. <laughs> so this was the summit we had. Um, Scientists from United Health Group from Minnesota, the tall people here, um, and then the um, data scientists from um, from Cebu and Manila, and then we had uh, yeah we actually the cohort actually um, they finished their training and they're now parang promoted to be uh, to data science parang positions in in their respective companies. Uh, and then when I was in Ayala, where I'm, where I I uh, worked most recently, uh, we actually uh, created a, an Ayala Analytics Professionals program, uh, which is a weekly uh, weekly sessions where we um, yeah, talk about um, the analytics. Um, the analytics um, process essentially uh, and then best practices for each and then people get uh, a chance to share so uh, these are all uh, professionals from different Ayala companies the interesting thing uh, is that uh, learning doesn't stop in the school but learning doesn't stop in the classroom even as professionals you continually learn and there are these uh, opportunities to uh, to keep growing um, outside the classroom um, 
But of course, traditionally, uh, or, or very important pa rin, um, yung um, core in the classroom. And also, this is where we talk about graduate school, which is where you actually have a focus time um, to uh, for your own learning to grow your to grow your skills and your your brain power essentially, um, but of course if you're working you know but you have to do both at the same time and of course you learn on the job but um, the challenge is always to uh, to 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 keep growing and uh, there are opportunities for that um, so I'll actually <laughs> insert a slide here which is like a my uh, one one or just a uh, uh, as a snippet of what what like data science and analytics is um, in um, as a field. Um, but yon yeah, happy to talk more. So that's parang uh, what I uh, I practice as a data scientist. Uh, yun, ngayon, yun yung job description niyo, data scientist. Uh, but what you actually do is you help uh, you help organizations, companies make uh, data-driven decisions. Um, so there's this cycle where you have the data, you analyze the data, you get insights from the data, and that informs your decisions. And it's uh, it's supposed to be a virtual cycle because that would, uh, the success of that would, um, would, um, would, um, would give the leadership more confidence in the importance of data. And, and then you ask uh, more questions and you ask, uh, you get to base more decisions in in, in data and, and so on. Um, of course, this has always been done, but with the technology now, with the availability of large amounts of data, there's this new nga, parang, uh, new industry in a way, talaga, that does parang that has technologies and techniques and 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 people, uh, even teams, analytics teams or data science teams that are dedicated to that. Uh, and here showing uh, again these are just uh, terms and um must lose ito in industry but there's really no definitions but by and large there's this um sub sub field or sub uh subset of technologies called uh, business intelligence and that's the the visual there is really making these dashboards that are updated in real time or uh regularly and this gives a snapshot for for companies to see what's happening. So this can be uh, financials, can be operations, etc. And then the other hand, on this other box, you have uh, again uh, big umbrella terms, but they're now being called data science or artificial intelligence, where you actually have models and algorithms that you develop to crunch all this data and come out with predictions, with insights, with forecasts. Uh, with, um, prescriptions even uh, with optimization, for example, that's additionally part of industrial engineering or operations research. Um, and, um, and these are all re related, these are all under analytics, uh, what I would call you know, the data science and analytics practice, because they all move towards, they're all aiming towards data-driven decision making. Right. And of course, you can imagine that the outputs of the model can be um, shown in the dashboard. Uh, and the data uh, showing the dashboard serves as inputs to the model. So uh, there, there's an echo, uh, there's an interdependence there as well. All right, so it's now uh, actually a very uh, lucrative um, field and it's interesting also that um, yeah we're uh, lucky in the sense that um, uh, we're able to work uh, remotely and uh, using uh, the online and virtual collaboration tools um, during this time uh, we're set up to to, to deliver pa rin. all right which brings us to next uh, to the near future um, Mm. And uh, close to uh, wrapping up here. Um, the near future is uh, we're starting the academic year and actually set to join. Um, it's not official yet, uh, so uh, but uh, hopefully this uh, yeah hopefully it becomes official soon that I'm joining uh, UP. 
National Institute of Physics, which a lot of you have, uh, have connections to. So very lucky to be uh, part of that uh, group and um, to be also, I guess, in timing is that my first semester of teaching will also be the first online uh, uh, remote learning um, remote learning uh, delivery. Uh, so um, learning about that, but of course, we have some familiarity with, with the uh, ano naman, available courses online. So it's a matter of adapting that and, um, and, um, and of course, guiding, seeing how best to guide the students uh, even without the face-to-face uh, -face, um, face -face classroom experience that we usually have. Um, so that's uh, um, where I'm headed to next and um, I'm looking forward to, to building, uh, 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 growing my own research uh, subgroup uh, at UP and um, and building that up uh, as a, as um, uh, as a yeah, as a as a as a research group that focuses on data driven uh, astronomy and um, computational uh, computational physics yes which is uh, uh, another which is uh, very related naman to data science. So, um, parang coming together, um, that would be, uh, while I'm also still consulting uh, for data science uh, in, in different industries, and also um, uh, weaving in uh, my science communication um, um, initiatives. Uh, so, we uh, na mentioning sciences, uh, knowledge channel, we actually, uh, shot uh, the ep uh, episodes that in uh, online, so the uh, online at home. So I did it here at home, uh, and hoping to uh, broadcast that online through Facebook and YouTube and those channels. Of course, these are also on YouTube. Um, and then and just to share a new uh, initiative I got involved in, where we're doing uh, a radio show. I'm co-hosting it with Sab Onkiko, who's a teacher <coughs> at Kuliat Elementary School. Um, so this is an initiative by Ateneo Salt, uh, where um, we have a show to help teachers and para teachers who are helping uh, learners at home at this time. And every day there's a different, uh, every day for a different subjects: so English, Filipino, math, science, and history. So for science, it's me and Sab every Thursday on DZRJ. So we'll start um, next month. And um, the, uh, the cool thing is that we'll be having guests who are uh, scientists and teachers. Uh, to share about um, yeah, the, 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 the topic, uh, for example, uh, for first quarter, the yung topics, uh, uh, compounds, uh, mixtures. Yeah. So we'll be inviting chemists uh, from the Pinoy Scientists uh, Network uh, community then to, 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 to join that show. Um, and then, uh, kung quarter yung physics, then we'll invite naman mga physicists uh, for the show. Okay, so uh, that's where I that's where we are so far. Uh, yeah, interestingly, I think ano naman, parang yes, uh, I'm I'm old, I'm older, but I'm also uh, still young in the sense that there's a lot to do, there's a lot to to build. Um, so um, I think um, um, it's also in a way a blessing. In disguise for me, at least, uh, that this uh, this pandemic, the quarantine situation, parang parang focused, parang what I what do I want, parang what do I want to do, and where I want to um, to 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 belong, uh, and I guess that's the invitation for us. Um, I think for most of us, our lives are still uh, most of our lives are still ahead of us. And this will be a temporary, uh, a temporary situation. Um, we don't know how long and what the and what the world will look like. Of course, it will be different, but um, some things will not change, right? Physics will, will not change. Like, uh, learning the way we learn, the way we connect, the way we um, the way we um, uh, build new things, uh, create new things, uh, 
uh, will be the same. So we just have to, um, um, ano ba? Parang, uh, uh, keep those things also as, as anchors uh, as we go through this. Um, so that's the, ano ba? Yun nga, that's the, that's the, <laughs> the invitation uh, that there's uh, uncertainty, uh, but there's also our capacity to be uh, with uncertainty, with this uncertainty, be comfortable, be even open to the uncertainty and see the openings that this actually uh, presents to us. Uh, maybe uh, new things that we wouldn't have thought of before are now um, uh, available and um, uh, attainable. Um, so uh, if you're not open to it, then you lose it. Right. If you you're you're focusing on the on the negative parts. But if you're open to it, there are gifts that will uh, come. Um, and then looking ahead, the blue is actually so the traditional the traditional life uh, career uh, ends in retirement. Uh, but it's an artificial number, but it matters. Uh, so nilagay ko dito sixty years. Uh, and then I also noted the. Uh, Average life expectancy in the Philippines is 71. But um, just to complete the picture uh, and to say that there's a lot of uh, yeah, a lot of room, a lot of uh, space to color, to color pa, uh, and who knows nga what the future will bring. So, um, yon, I'm I hope to end in an optimistic note and to invite you to. Yeah, paint your own uh, canvases, you know, be bold uh, and uh, chart your own path uh, in this uh, uh, physics um, landscape in a way. Uh, and now to, all together as a community, we form a rich tapestry. Uh, there's a heart there now. Uh, and then <laughs> we all, diba, we all uh, make uh, each other's lives richer uh, this way. So. I'll just end with the uh, contacts so we can follow Pinoy Scientists on Facebook or and or Instagram um, and uh, connect with the scientists there. Um, and you can reach out to me on um, online as well, uh, Facebook or LinkedIn, and just mention that you were in this meetup. Uh, and if you have any questions that uh, hindi mo it ngayon, then feel free. But, I encourage you to do it now while we're here, diba? so we can respond to it right away. Uh, but we can continue the conversation. So, uh, that thank you again. Thank you for uh, the time and the um, and the space and the attention. And I look forward to uh, to hearing from you. Thank you, salamat, Dr. Reina. Can we give a virtual round of applause? Thank you so much. Okay, um, thank you for giving us your, uh, your time and for sharing and for giving us a glimpse of your career. So, maraming salamat. Um, I would like to take this time to read some questions, but we really encourage in Physics Meetup, we really encourage everyone to direct your questions to Dr. Reina if, um, if your connection is stable because this is a very unique opportunity. So, when you want to ask a question to Dr. Rina, if you want to, you can click the raise hand button. Then only when we acknowledge your name, we can unmute your microphone. If your signal is unstable, you can also write your questions in here. So please feel free to click the raise hand button. Okay, probably I'll start with the first one who threw up the questions. Okay, this one is from Ms. Angelica Cortez at NEUST College of Education. We started offering BS Ed major in physics last year in hope to train future physics teachers for our basic education in the province. We only have four students as starters. Physics is a field which is seldom appreciated by students. I believe Ms. Reina was born to become a physicist and the likes of her are few. Ms. Reina, can you suggest strategies on how students can find this field interesting? To choose it as a field of specialization. The country is in need of more physics teachers. Oh, uh, oh well, uh, yeah, I agree. Completely agree. 
Um, thanks for that. Um, and thanks for the work you're doing. I guess it becomes really uh, a date. It's not, it's, really, it's not a hypothetical question. It's really, um, it's really, it's really an oper in a way an operational question about how they get more students. Uh, but then, you, then, then when you think about that, then you see you look at the the the, the pipeline, right? Where the students come from, and then you know, yeah, then it goes back to their experiences, but their first experiences of science in school um, gives a lot, makes a lot of parang diba, imprints imprints on yung even yung, uh, how you feel about a subject, no? Because we're we're humans, but they're wired. We're wired that way. But if you're uh, afraid of math or afraid of seeing equations, it, it's very visceral. Uh, that that um, then you then you wouldn't pursue us. But it stops people from pursuing a STEM degree because of that uh, fear. Um, and so. Um, I don't have the answers. In fact, I don't have uh, as much experience as, as many. But uh, I guess just to um, just to give my take or, or my two cents, um, that's that's one is really the experience has to be positive. We need more students to have more learners to have a positive experience of science uh, and math, uh, and and that in our in our in 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 our education um and in our own in our own experiences we know that that uh that the teachers uh it's our teachers who who showed us the the fun and the the beauty of science that led us to this path so we can always uh credit that to teachers. Although in some cases though it's that parang the, the, the first stage is a teacher nila kasi hindi but, but in most cases I think in most cases really the teacher shows it to us. Right? So um so which is to say that the subject itself diba, uh, can be um um, which is uh, which is to say, I guess the other the other th I thought that I get here is that it's um in the the from my exposure in industry bites, but it's really we have a marketing problem. But physics has a marketing problem because it um because it's associated diba parang it's aso it's parang if you ask people parang physics it's like nose bleed diba parang difficult diba pero uh, which is diba in a way it's true but a, a lot of things are difficult as well right i mean uh law is difficult i mean medicine is difficult diba parang, but that's not what's associated with it diba what's associated is if you become a lawyer diba you, you actually become parang uh respected diba uh, pillar of the community you can uh, become a congress, I don't know. I mean, diba, iba yung associations with it. Um, and medicine, of course, you have people, diba? in the same way, but in the same way, you, know, diba, you, you do the difficult thing so that you can uh, help people, that you can create new things, that you can uh, uh, build new uh, build new things. Um, and um, I guess um, part of it is, yung, uh, it's not part of the everyday experience or hindi na connect. Like for example, this smartphone, diba? Like that's phys I mean that's physics. Parang magkagawa mo ba yon kung is it physics, diba? Physics yon. Pero the thing is, you don't need physics to understand the physics to enjoy the smartphone. Pero it takes a teacher or it takes a, yun nga, uh, it takes a, um, someone to make the connection between this wonderful thing to uh, the the study of physics, and then make that you know, a positive connection. Um, and so, parang that's one parang technique, diba? Parang using something that the learners can relate to, and then make it make make the subject uh, relevant to them. The other thing, I guess, is yung 
Um, not making it, not making it intimidating which is uh, also di ba, parang our image um <laughs> or, pero um yun nga i guess para may minamana tayo may minamana tayo pero i think all of us especially the younger ones um sorry ah uh, pero <laughs> because you you're parang native to this technology di ba you can actually um reframe or create stories, videos, promos, uh, putting parang physics in that new light. Na it's not intimidating, it's not difficult. It could be, but it could also be this, di ba? This uh this uh, thing that's engaging, that's relatable, that's uh inviting. Um So yon, parang um, yeah, it's a it's a parang we're starting we're starting somewhere, but there's parang so many opportunities and room to 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 go to grow in different directions uh, and this is part of it diba? Parang even the poster diba? was so inviting and so uh, cute and light diba? it's not na parang physics parang matakot kayo diba? parang uh, makakaintindi lang ito mga matatalino diba? parang diba? parang hindi na eh. we, we don't we, we parang we're 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 we're, we're rebranding rebranding na everyone is welcome um if you if you're if you're interested you work hard uh we'll help you um you'll you'll do this and then eventually you can teach others and you you become also you become uh, you help others to the path as well so i think uh yun, that parang part of that rebranding is already happening so hopefully uh this grows and then for all to the next generation and um and then as many of you are teachers or you become teachers then so, parang pass it on to your students, um, and um, then the, of course, di ba, parang we cannot change the country overnight, but we grow, uh, we grow uh, in the positive direction. I think, naman, we are going in the right direction. So, good luck with your um, program. Um, um, I guess the invitation is. Um, I know in the child, but anyway, invitation also mga scientists that even even to um other professionals nga na we tend to um uh, we tend to discount and even to disparage or even disparage para to look down or uh, not appreciate the power of marketing because um because it's not part of our training maybe di ba? but it's actually very very powerful in fact that runs the world uh, it's crazy you know but um um but in, yeah, maybe you, know, you can use some of that power um, that you're comfortable with. Uh, of course, um, you know, in truth in advertising and all of that. Uh, pero essentially, diba, you can parang, it's really about the framing ring and even the branding and the color and the, the parang how you communicate. Diba? So again, this goes to science, to science, to communicating science that um, we can go beyond our usual parang traditional channels and actually um, embrace uh, embrace uh, more I know um, so yun, I guess some creativity maybe will help some uh, openness to other um, to other um, to other innovations uh, but uh, I feel you I uh, I've heard this from many uh, na even para among science yung physics yung pinaka uh, pinaka konti or pinaka mahirap and parang we as the chosen few kumbaga uh, parang it's up to us to uh, to change this diba, in our own little ways uh, uh, and it's a challenge dahil nga meron ng ganong connotation but parang it's up to us to be the face parang the face of physics na hindi uh, hindi intimidating at hindi uh, snobbish at hindi um Masyadong out of this world. Parang we can be a bit out of this world, but... 
don't be too too out of this world, di ba? Parang um I guess that yun, yun yung parang yun yung balance. But yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, I hope that helps, yeah. Call on Giselle Ashley Ayo to ask the question directly. Sir, mahaba pala ako sumagot. So, iikiyan ko na. Okay, go. Para we can get more questions. We have 33 plus 4 questions of okay. you. Okay, sige. Let's do blitz. Uh, hello po. Um, I'm Jaisal Ashley Ayo from Philippine Science High School, Southern Methodist uh, Campus. Oh, perfect. <laughs> I'm an incoming grade 12 student and um, my question would be about career. What are the key differences and similarities of an astrophysics career and a data science career? Wow! <laughs> Interesting. Oh, good question. Because I, I have both. Or I, I, I experience both. Um, of course, uh, marami, di ba? maraming ways to, maraming differences. But uh, for the parang fundamental ones, you can imagine um astronomy nga, uh, by its very nature uh is uh, has no practical use in 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 the indus- in industry or society and that's very interesting um but uh, it's really we're studying the 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 things that are out there of course there's an interface which is space physics let's say and then you can get into engineering the and even parang the effects on earth but once you get to parang planets or gas- galaxies really so far out that um parang the impulse really is, is to to learn to learn to learn to learn to learn talaga <laughs> just to learn about them uh, um so parang yeah it's a very um very special thing um and i guess it goes also about the kind of people and the culture um, but at the, uh, I guess I'm point to that it's very research. Uh, it's a very research uh, and oriented culture, because that's the because that's the, the the point is to to learn something new about the universe, and so you have now this uh, research uh, community that does that, and that's uh, mainly planted in the research uh, institutions in universities and in uh, national labs, for example, or NASA, for example. Uh, and and things like that. Um, uh, on the other hand, you ha- in the data science, uh, the data science field was actually um, set up diba, to to take advantage of the massive information that's being collected in the internet. So you have Facebook, uh, Google, right? um, and these big uh, internet companies, and then all that tech tech. Uh, Tech uh, companies that 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 in, that are in this ecosystem, including Zoom, for example. So Zoom, the data scientists at Zoom, are 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 collecting and, and analyzing uh, the data that's coming out of this call, and they're using that to to improve their product, but to understand how users are using their product and to to identify uh, which features for example they should be rolling out or which bugs they should be fixing and that helps the strategy of the the, the product and the team uh, and so on so netflix for example the data scientists are 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 uh, working are, <laughs> are fine tuning those algorithms to tell you which movies you should watch you know so it's very um um industrial industrial meaning Consumer, consumer facing, consumer about the consumer because it's a product that's serving the consumer, and the consumer is paying the company uh, to uh, uh, to for the service, the bar for the product. Uh, so very interesting. So they have similarity in terms of the the skills, the the analytical skills you need, the mathematical skills you need, the scientific skills you need, but the how they're applied. Um, Diba? gives you a different flavor uh, because then, for example, in this case, diba? you'll have to uh, be in meetings, uh, in meetings with the marketing department, in meeting, but it's more, in fact, um, uh, collaborative in that way because you you actually have to interface with the business. So it's a very different career um, and you learn to even um, wear 
corporate attire and things like that. But uh, <laughs> so you see, yun nga, it's a di- different, um, different um, realm or different um, uh, context. But interestingly, nga, because of our, um, uh, because of the computational skills that are needed, uh, PhD scientists have uh, many have moved to become uh, data scientists in in the industry, Silicon Valley and uh, uh, all around the world. So um, that happened in the same way that many physicists became Wall Street, uh, work in Wall Street as quants. So that's a different world than finance, diba? So basically, you you can move you can move to a different career. It's quantitative. You learn that domain using the fundamentals you learn in a physics uh, in a physics uh, degree with a physics degree uh, but that's yeah that's up to you up to different people so for me yun nga, parang i have to navigate both worlds uh, and then i say okay maybe now i want to do more of the academic research again so so i'm joining uh, a up um, but i also don't want to lose that experience of working with the uh, industry so i'm doing that a part time so yeah, there are uh, uh, there are uh, unique, I know, but well, unique, um, and then uh, experiences from both. So um, and and the life is long, so it's not just choosing one career, but it gives you a flavor, na, na that's why one person can para navigate both, uh, and it's really up to you, naman, diba? you you to to experience and to see what uh, what what fits you. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Michelle. Okay. This one is from Guy Pinolio Espaldado. Dr. Reina, how do you see the future of astrophysics in our country? Hmm. One question. Yun nga, yun yung interesting about astrophysics. Um, the interesting thing about astrophysics is there's only yun nga, as a small number of people in the world who happen to be uh yeah spending their their time with their work and their career studying these things that are outside um there's only one universe diba? so it's not the man it's the same universe regardless of where you are in the in the globe uh of course there are special places in the globe uh that's where you can put telescopes uh, because uh, you need a dry and high place so to to have a smaller uh, atmosphere, atmospheric disturbance, uh, atmospheric turbulence. That's why you have uh, uh, the many of our uh, big telescopes are in Chile, in Hawaii, in places like that. So they they have a special advantage in terms of uh, astronomical uh, observation. Uh, for the Philippines, we very very humid, <laughs> uh, so not for optical astronomy. Um, we also don't have yung parang for radio astronomy that would be like in South Africa where they have uh, less plan. Actually, Antarctica is also a very special place. So we have the South Pole Telescope there. Uh, if you're particularly adventurous, uh, you can actually be uh, uh, stationed there. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, I have colleagues who, who do that. So it's crazy. Uh, it's a crazy, it's a crazy career. Um, now. Uh, the interesting thing, at least from my perspective, in terms of you know, observational astronomy or this data-driven astronomy, is that a, a lot of the data are now publicly released. So it's now publicly available for everyone to download. So as long as we have the in the the keys, as only the keys now the 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 the, the internet connection, um, and of course the knowledge uh, that allows you to. Uh, to to analyze this data, uh, but there's no barriers in the sense na na there are no barriers in the sense na that you need to be like in the telescope uh, because now the data comes to you, uh, and you can actually do research uh, with that data and publish papers. And so this is part of the plans uh, for for our uh, research group, and we hope that um, that with uh, the the effort and the uh, and and um, finding also collaborators uh, internationally, uh, we can uh, uh, we can grow a, a, a group here. Um, so that's my point of view. Um, of course, it's a big, even astrophysics is a big, big field. 
and we have also the plans for the space agency uh, which um which i'm which i uh we don't know the details naman di ba? but that's parang that's also um of, of course in the same um in the, in in this at least in the same ano na, uh, realm uh but of course it's bigger right the space agency has a bigger it's a different mandate uh um for for the for for the country but that includes for example satellites uh, but the diwata uh, satellites and um, uh, nano satellites and and the engineering that goes into that and the data um that comes from that um um so um and there's an opportunity to also have astronomical uh, research uh, within that uh, agency um okay so so when I put it all together uh, there are parang um there are uh, there are now parang spaces diba? spaces to do astronomy uh, from here and it's an opportunity that your generation can um, can take advantage of, uh, and of, and of course that can also be used as stepping stones to um, to join the global community uh, astrophysics community, um, and um, and yon, yon. I guess it's also an invitation, right? Uh, I'm starting this, but um, I'm I'm optimistic uh, because of the things that I've said. Um, But yes, uh, sa dami naman ng field, sa totoo lang, sa dami ng field ng science, um, it's really just about, yun nga, um, if you have a, a, a um, upper, uh, uh, a mentor in a group that, 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 uh, that starts that somewhere here, that's the opportunity. Yeah, you had recently Ian Vega, for example, di ba? Parang he parang started the group on general relativity, and so parang they, and then they're able to 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 grow that, um, and so and so on and so on. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, may we have Mary Crystalline Araraka? Hello. 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 Um, I. I cannot start my video because parang naka-disable po at ako. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. Just go ahead. Okay. Um, start my video. Okay. Here it is. Ah, yeah. Hi, hi. <laughs> I'm your fan. So, I'm from the uh, RTU Astronomy way back batch 2015. <laughs> so, maraming beses na po tayo nagkaka-encounter. Pero hindi masyado close encounter I like this one so I'm getting giddy at the moment so here's my question um after graduating from my course in astronomy I choose to go to a practical job which is not totally related from my BS degree to contribute to my family and as well as because so of some practical reasons then and as of now I am planning to become part of the academe and now going to start my master's in environmental Mental science at the University of the East. And now um, I would like to ask what is your advice that you would like to give to me who wants to go back to her first love and what are the skills that are, you know, you think necessary for me to take so that I can have some edge um, on this journey because I am really planning to be part of the academy. Cool. Ah, no, that's that's uh, great news. Uh, in a way, parang it mirrors my uh, and my move, and um, it's um, um, I guess of, of some thoughts long to share. Of course, you can continue the conversation. Uh, but uh, actually, you know, realize ko also is that this professional experience, uh, in any job, because <laughs> yeah, before like wala talaga exposure, but but in any job, it actually teaches you importance skills right yes. teaches you parang it forces you to to diba, to to learn how to communicate with people to learn how to work in in a team to learn how to uh, 
manage projects, to schedule timelines, yeah. That we uh, that that's not as um that actually I didn't get from my PhD in Princeton, uh, like because the academic world is so different, um, and there's they they have different ways of managing that, but actually, um, it can also be um uh. Oh, dito, a problem, an issue for others na hindi na ma-manage. Now, for example, yun nga, you have people, di ba, taking too long in their thesis na hindi mo alam kung kailan matatapos or what, di ba? Parang in a company, that could never happen. Never happen, di ba? Pag ito yung timeline mo, you have to finish yes, that in the yes. time. Ito yung deadline mo, you have to finish in the time, right? You have They're to beat the time. Yes, di ba? Kung naman, malate ka, malate ka one day. Pero hindi, hindi na pwede yan na parang, Eh, sa, di ba, sa, like, naging iba, parang one year, two years, hindi pa rin sila tapos. So, parang, what's happening, di ba? So, parang, ang point is, you can take that, that experience, that discipline, di ba, that professionalism, and apply it to your graduate uh, experience, graduate school, and you actually have an advantage over those na stayed in school uh, all their life or when stayed in school, and you actually help them. Actually, you can, ano, make a timeline, you can make appointments with your supervisor every week, di ba? Parang these things um, that come naturally or come parang um, as part of the work experience, you can actually, di ba? Huwag mo naman lahat, di ba? Kasi yun nga, <laughs> ayaw naman natin na nine na to five tayo, di ba? Pero at least that, that structure uh, actually gives you an advantage, I think, in the academic uh, uh, um, world. So that's one. <laughs> the other thing, I guess, the, the other thing, naman is the other way, uh, which is, um, you know, among uh, maybe what's missing or not as as, as emphasized in the in work in the industry world, is the the depth of um, depth of um, learning and research that we do in the academic world, because yeah, uh, uh, because yeah, there's a timeline. Eh? You cannot do, diba, this. Uh, in, in one year, di ba? You need to deliver it in three months. So, and then, then you become, iba pa yung standards mo of what's uh, deliverable, di ba? Or what's acceptable. But in, in, in the academy, we have the luxury and the time that we actually uh, focus, put focus on understanding a problem, learning all the facets about it. Uh, and that gives you a certain, um, again, advantage uh, over someone who just parang, di ba? Had to just get the headlines and then move on. So I think um, there's a uh, yeah there's an advantage to um, having the the skill sets from both worlds uh, and then then up to you na nga, di ba, to to make the most of it. Um, but yes, I think I actually see that definitely the even the the pro, the professors who have that parang management um, skills. Uh, not necessarily management experience. They probably got it. They could have gotten it from their family business, di ba? They could have gotten it from um, from from other uh, organizations or role models, di ba? Not necessarily the corporate world, but in general, that parang management experience that they don't teach, uh, <laughs> they, they don't they don't teach in the in 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 school in our in our schooling uh, actually helps. So this parang um um. Yeah, you don't even call them soft skills. Eh? They're actually real skills. <laughs> well, sige na nga, hindi ba parang what's soft and what's hard? It's really, um, how do you manage people? How do you manage projects? Um, matters in how you, how you, um, how you make an impact. So, so yun, that's my uh, two cents advice Now you can actually Parang get the best uh, parang of both worlds and 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 use that in your uh, marketing rin, di ba? Well, you learn about marketing and then of course then you can use marketing in your in, to to further your your research career as well or even just yun nga, di ba? Parang <clears throat> the grit of ano of 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 finding partners or finding uh, people to help. Um, so yun exciting uh, and. Uh, Good luck, Satin. <laughs> okay, uh, we're going to have a lot of questions in here. They're very interested in asking you questions, Dr. Inga. Okay, this one is from Jani Omar Biscocho. Almost the same question with Lester Toledo and Marielle John Donasco. They're having 
their question is really on ad the advice that you can give for those who want to pursue postgraduate studies considering financial constraints. Hmm. Yeah, so the cool thing about uh, graduate school is that uh, a lot of scholarships are available. Um, and in fact, in other countries, it's actually not uh, student. You're not considered a student. You're actually considered like a, a knowledge worker uh, in the more enlightened European um, countries like uh, the Scandinavian countries. Um, but uh, which just goes to say that as a graduate student, kasi, you're there not just to learn, but to actually work. Uh, and so meaning um, you get paid for the work. Um, so it can come in forms of scholarship nga, or as a research assistant in a project uh, that your uh, lab or supervisor has a grant for. Um, so there, because you actually work. The thing is, your work also goes to your thesis. So it's all aligned the man. Um, so for example, uh, or and or teaching assistantships. So you know man is you teach uh, the undergrads or uh, be an instructor. So that's how you get uh, your your salary. But at the same time, uh, well, you know, it helps you uh, it, it sharpens also deepens your um, your 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 understanding of physics as now the teacher uh, teaching it. So um, financial constraints are less of an issue, uh, I, I would say, in graduate school. It's really about looking for those opportunities. Uh, in our in the Philippines, of course, there's the DOST uh, scholarships. Um, and then these uh, research assistantships in, in teaching uh, positions that are available in the universities uh, that you can do while you're uh, pursuing uh, graduate school. And then uh, abroad, uh, there are actually similar. So for example, so Princeton, they're, they're, they give you, uh, there are teaching assistantships uh, in your first two years while you're taking classes. And then on your third year, when you're taking theses, um, you become a research assistant of your supervisor and you get paid through the, the grants. Um, ayun, and then there are also fellowships. I mean, actually, you know, fellowships, I, you get paid and you don't have to teach. Oh, yun yung kagandahan ng yung, 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 yun yung kagandahan ng fellowship. Gusto mo pa rin, uh, or you don't need to teach as, as much. So, um, so yun. And, in, and then the tuition also kasama na siya. So you don't have to pay for anything. Um, so yun. It's actually a great thing to do. Lalo na ngayon, di ba? Like, just apply. Um, and that's true for science, I think, in general. For science. But kasi, for example, for MBA, uh, you have to pay a lot, di ba? Um, for the professional degrees, it's it's uh, it's an investment, di ba? That is an investment you you pay for it. Pero PhD in, in science is actually uh, work. You're contributing to the lab that you're working for, working with. At the same time, you get a degree, you get a training, and you get a degree. So, but that, that's the that's the transaction. So it's actually, uh, I think, a misnomer that you're actually paying for graduate school uh, in science. You don't, uh, you actually get paid uh, and the work that you do uh, um, becomes uh, 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 actually cheap labor to the lab that you're working for. Okay. Anyway. We have here Gabriel Salva. Um, hi, good afternoon. Uh, I'm from the University of the East. I'm actually a graduating BS biology student, but mm. I'm planning to pursue physics for grad school because I've always loved physics. So my question oh, wow. is... Good uh, for you. Based on your experience, ma'am, uh, do you think that the postgraduate programs here in the Philippines in physics, especially in astrophysics, is sufficient enough to mold aspiring physicists to be globally competent in the field, especially in research? Like, for one, do we have mm. enough equipment? That would be the question, ma'am. 
Yeah, yes, oh definitely. Uh, so that's the thing, diba? parang selection effect din. Na parang the, the, there are certain types of research that you cannot do here because you need an accelerator. In fact, uh, to do particle physics, experimental particle physics, there's only one place you can do it, essentially CERN. So you have to be in CERN, right? Or you have to be working with someone in CERN where the accelerator is. Um, so it's just uh, it's, it's in the nature of the research. Um, but as I said, like, yeah, the the different parang research groups here. Uh, I found a way to do conduct the research here and publish uh, papers and contribute. Um, so, so by that track record, you can say that they are um, they are yeah they're doing the job. Um, yeah, and in fact, I think actually I don't know the exact ano pero more or less. Eh, the criteria for getting um, uh, uh, research, uh, a graduate degree is you actually have to have contributed something new. So if you didn't if you did not contribute something new, uh, you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't parang pass the standard, uh, and you wouldn't you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't get an, a degree. Like the 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 degree giving institution uh, should will not give you that degree. So by that very fact, parang Yon. Parang the, those who are parang giving MS and PhD should be um should be ano. But of course, in, in practice, of course, I'm sure I'm sure it is true for all. Uh, pero that's the general um that's the general and then, yeah, maybe there are um and then I guess and then it's up to you, diba, to 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 in a way you it's both ways, diba? You apply, but they, and then they also um accept you. But it's up to you to um, find a good program. But more than a good program, it's about finding the professor, the supervisor who will uh, mentor you and uh, lead you to become a researcher yourself. And that's really how this works in science. It's, an inter it's a holdover from the guild system in the... Um, before the industrial revolution, where you know we have a master um, swordsmith, that that the person who makes the swords, uh, to learn how to make a sword, you become an apprentice of that master swordsmith, uh, uh, and by doing and by teaching you and by telling you what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong, you can also become a master uh, swordsmith. And so that's how uh, it works also in scientific, in, in the scientific um, realm. Um, you learn by apprenticing yourself um, to, uh, to a scientist, a professional scientist, researcher, and together you, you, um, you publish your own research. Uh, you lead it, but with the guidance of the supervisor. So that's really the, uh, the trick. Um, and um, and uh, the trick is finding that person, um, and it can be from anywhere. Yeah, now that the world is in a way flattened, but also you know, of course, you have constraints. But more or less, uh, you're baga maaga pa naman. So, but the the point is giving you that 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 point of view that if you find that person, then then you're good, right? And then I could say that there are many people like that. In the Philippines, and so it's really now because um, you know, so I, the answer is there are there are people like that, maybe dozens of 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 uh, professional physicists who can uh, who can who can who can train physicists. So um, so yun. Um, I hope that answers the question. And then of course there are hundreds of that in the world, diba? So and in the mind, there's also no 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 stopping you to to go elsewhere. But um pero yun, you can talk to us first, uh, since we're um but like with the galog, and then let's see diba, where 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 what the other opportunities are. Okay. Um let's talk about, hmm. let's talk about data science, your shift to data science. This one is from James Masilio. Um, what were your initial considerations that prompted you to shift to data science? And do you believe that data analytics is now the future? Mm -hmm. Question. 
Um, so, yeah, personal experience lang din yung, yung, yung first one. Pero I was actually... Um, um the argument the argument that convinced me um was that um was that the the data the, the big data big data uh or the the transactional data below is is in the companies um so so my first job was actually with the smart the telco and imagine they collect data from all our uh, interactions in the mobile phone. Uh, and um, they don't share that with researchers, right? Because it's their company's data. But the idea is they need the scientists to mine through that data and to uh, understand their customers better. Of course, you know, they become business questions because it's the questions the business wants to, to answer. But for me, the, 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 the appeal there is that, oh, I get to work with this rich data uh, and then maybe they let me also uh, play with it to think about other questions. Uh, in reality, of course, uh, you spend most of your time for the business right? because that's why they hired you. So, that's the always the trade off there, but um, but that's the the uh, main reason I think it's really the I know that the that the I mean at least as a first step you no know, parang it made sense because that's that's where the data is, uh, but of course that evolved that in um, including yung yeah, the uh, the fulfillment also of 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 helping solve problems in that context uh, I think. Uh, that I didn't uh, realize before. Um, and then the, about future, you know, I mean, it's just a buzzword, diba? But um, the future is, you know, future is everything. It's, it's so many things. Uh, and in fact, nga, um, data-driven decision-making has always been the core of, 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 of business, diba? Uh, they have to use the data that's available to make good decisions, diba? And that's that's what differentiates uh, uh, what how how business uh, performs. Um, of course, there's also an element of luck, diba? So that's always the ano, diba? The luck and the intuition versus the data, but it's always been part of that. So I think this is just that um, that now we have so much uh, data and technology. So I guess the answer is that yes, it will be part of the future. Parang ganyan, it's not going away. Parang it's now parang you just have to do it. Companies now just have to do it. So it now becomes part of their operations. Um, so it's not going away. Um, especially with the pandemic, I think it's even more highlighted now, the importance of, of doing this. So um, so yes, it's not the future, but it's definitely part of our present and future. Okay. Um, we have from Alan Perry Dain from RTU of all the you've been through, what was yet the most unforgettable and significant that you can share with those who want to pursue the field of yours? Um, uh, say the first part again, unforgettable what? Yes, uh, most unforgettable and significant experience that you have been through. An experience? Oh, wow. <laughs> interesting. Um, interesting. Um, Interesting. Um, um, of course, there are many ways to answer this question. I feel yeah, parang hindi naman pa ganun ka, I think marami pang pwede mangyari. But when I look back, actually, especially you, you know, I tell you the journey, the, parang the, in the sen- yung, I still, I still feel a special, um, special, um, uh, affinity or special feeling for my time in Italy. Uh, so interesting. Eh. Yeah. Um, and I think it's just something diba, about being like the first time you're abroad, alone, and de- dependent, and, uh, and, and getting paid to study physics, uh, and that parang very um, bubble kind of uh, world, and also that age of very 
young and idealistic and in Europe and all of that. So um so yeah, um in terms of parang unforgettable na parang capsule of 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 of, of that stage of my life, uh, I still go back to to Trieste. May I call our Andre or Donio? Um, Andre or Donio, you can now ask your question directly. Uh, good, af good afternoon, Dr. Reina. Uh, I'm Andre Spencer Po, uh, an incoming third year student this academic year from National Institute of Physics at UP Diliman. Oh. And this mid year, po kasi lab application uh -huh. started in NIP. And uh -huh. we recently <laughs> heard that you'd be joining NIP. Right. So, my question is related to your lab, if ever. Po. Uh -oh. <laughs> In behalf to those na wala pa pong lab and interested sa lab nyo. So, right. um, can you elaborate your lab po, lab requirements, and when do you plan to accept undergrad apprenticeships? So, and oh, welcome right. to NAP, Dr. Reyna. <laughs> so, there you go. This is exactly what I was talking about. But this is something that we can, of course, take offline. Uh, pero, um, yeah, this is parang how, we, how it happens. Um, you actually... Um, um, yeah, um, agree to be an apprentice of a, a professor for a lab. Um, as I said, you know, for me, I'm just starting. Uh, so the general idea lang naman is you know the topic that if you want to work on uh, data-driven uh, research on an astronomical topic or the um, a computational topic, um, then uh, parang then that's aligned yung ating interest and then we can talk more about uh, possibly working together. Um, so yes, uh, the uh, advice, I mean, I guess what I would just say is that just you can just reach out to me on Facebook and say that you're interested and then we can take it from there. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Um, may we call on Lloyd Lloyd? Hello, Lloydy Lloyd. You can now unmute your microphone. Uh, uh, hello. Hi, Lloydy. Uh, uh, hello. Uh, good day, Dr. Reina. Um, actually, I'm also a I'm a physics instructor, but mm. at the same time, commercial statistician. Po, um, mm. I do I accept data analysis for ano uh, thesis. Um, ano po ba yung ano in 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 data in your experience in data science, which statistical method um you usually usually use? Hmm. Um, kasi dami kasing statistical methods from univariate to multivariate to time series. So, ano yung mga specific po na hmm. ano, hmm. methods? Oh yeah, exactly what you mentioned, no? Uh, of course, it really depends on the problem. Uh, the first part sa analytics practice is really yung um, uh, articulating the business problem and then translating it to an analytics problem which makes it nga amenable to these techniques. And then after that, it becomes the parang methodology selection, right? The approach uh, to that particular problem, and you select the appropriate ones for that problem. Uh, in business, a lot of it, in, yeah, as you as you mentioned, the time series forecasting because they want to project demand next year for their planning purposes, um, see areas of growth. Also done uh, um, some projects that are geospatial, so more of uh, mapping. Uh, but then overlaying different data layers um, to assess, for example, certain um, locations, right, for 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 a new branch or a new store or whatever they they want. Um, and then another, I guess, another um, broad um, broad uh, <clears throat> broad <clears throat> set of methodologies are related to oper um, to optimization. So more of your prescription, naman, like they want to minimize some, you know, minimize something or maximize something. <clears throat> uh, so um, there's also that, uh, parang uh, set of tools from operations research, uh, linear programming, things like that. So uh, yeah, very actually, um, yeah, I think you we covered a lot of it. Of course, may mga super specific ganun, like for image processing ganon. But I actually haven't encountered that myself um, but 
but yes, I guess that answer is, I mean, the answer is yes, parang even those regression um, or yeah, even common, um, common uh, machine learning um, machine learning models are actually used in industry applications. They're actually not so, di ba, parang from the point of view of mga physics analysts, parang gusto mo yung sophisticated kasi ipapublish mo ganyan, pero in yeah. the industry settings, really parang it works. So then, yun na yun. Di ba, parang you don't have to uh, reinvent the wheel. Mm. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we apologize if we cannot accommodate all the questions sent in here, but please know that we will note them all. So here in Zoom, we can now accommodate our last two questions before we proceed with the FB questions, Facebook questions. Oh, wow, we have time. All right. Um, we Facebook questions. Pala. Um, may I call on Alan Neil Garcia? Um, hello, po. good afternoon, po, Dr. Reina. I'm a fan. <laughs> um, actually, this is my first time hearing about the Tevez uh, theory of gravity. Mm. This is um, much uh, about the physics question. Po. Uh, uh, po, how does it differ with the general theory of relativity? And is it a viable theory of gravity? Po? Uh, do, you, do, you, do you see it as a viable theory of gravity in the years to come? Po ba? Wow. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, Actually, since I'm not a theorist, um, parang hindi ganun kalalim din yung understanding of it. Um, but the, there's a, and that's, and also, parang hindi din siya ganun, I guess, nga, ka, ka well-known. Uh, but of course, in that field, parang it is, parang one of the alternative theories na, na, na that people are studying. Uh, in fact, yung thesis ni Doc, Doc Reggie, the, 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 yung PhD uh, student ni Ian Vega that got um, who defended his thesis as a panelist, uh, explored, uh, explored that, those kinds of theories. But yun, highly, highly theoretical pa rin eh. Um, and then of course, the question naman is, can we distinguish between, uh, can we see signatures of it in let's say uh, gravitational wave observations, kanyan. still very um, early days. Um, so uh, unfortunately, I can say, but a more definitive uh, answer. Um, I guess it's an invitation, diba, for for you to I know to to explore more if you're interested. But definitely, it's a parang it's an active area of research. Um, but in terms of parang the number of people, diba, the number of publications. It's parang small compared to, uh, di ba? Parang the more mainstream topics. Uh, but yun nga, meron ganun, ganun eh. May flavors of yun nga, of science where yun parang yun. Parang you can put everyone who studies this topic in a room, di ba? Or in, in the same conference. And, that, and then they, um, and then it's hard to tell, di ba? It's really hard to tell, uh, di ba? It's, it's, it's hard to, ano ba? Predict the future talaga. Um, but for example, string theory, di ba? Was very popular for a long time. And then it's now uh, diminishing na rin yung, yung interest and yung ano. So who knows? Uh, who knows? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you, Pa. Thank you. This will be the last question from Zoom. Um, mm -hmm. Can you call on Kirchel and Noda? Ayan po. Hello. Hi, Dr. Ayan. Hello. Hi, Dr. Reyna. This, this is Aki. Si Aki pala ito. Hello po. Because, uh, Dr. Reyna, I just want to ask um, something related about data analysis. Because hmm. um, supposedly po, yung, I was supposed to correlate po sana yung data po about corals if may effect ba yung sun sa corals. Okay. Then, uh, na um, as I parang gather the data, and then parang na realize ko na kung na nasabihan po ako na yung correlation does not imply or cause causation po. So, mm -hmm. what does it mean po ba no, na parang if ever, ano po ba yung possible ways para makorrelate po sana yung ano yung sa corals and yung sa sun? Parang may yung parang cause. Yes. Oh, uh, my, my. 
na ano mo yung kasi uh, actually yun yeah that's a very important principle you are very important to keep it so for us to understand and keep in mind that it's true correlation does not imply causation um if it rains the ground is wet so yeah for common sense oh the ground is wet dahil umulan because it rained right um but um the usual example is that there can be uh the common cause for these two things so the the that um they happen at the same when a happens b happens it could be not because a causes b but because another thing x causes both a and b so every time we have x you actually have both a and b um and you can think of examples or wala example ngayon pero yeah uh, yung ko uh, okay so and this is the beauty of science science the scientific method is actually what can establish causation which is to say we actually do an experiment where we x we do x and no x diba? and we watch kung there's a or there's both a and b or there's a only or b only and so on and so um yeah, that's how science works. We actually do experiments and then we have control variables and then you divide, change different things. Um, but then we challenge now or may get an opportunity where where um, where uh, without doing experiments, you can try to, um, to to get at correlations. Yes, and that's the whole data science uh, game. Uh, but now actually there I think it's an active area of research. Yung parang how do you get causation out of data alone? Mm -hmm. um, and um, and um, very early, very early stage. Pero kasi yun na yung thing. Kasi parang yun yung kasi may concern na nga na baka spurious lang itong lahat ng nakikita dahil hindi siya true cause and effect, right? Um, so yeah, and, pero for most things, yun nga, yeah, again, it depends. Because for most things, correlations uh, already um, are significant or parang mean something. So I guess for you, babalik rin, di ba? Parang what do you really want to establish? And then if you really want to establish causation, di ba? What kind of experiment uh, do you need to conduct, di ba? And what do you need and how do you need? What do you need to uh, get it done? Can it be done? Um, but then also there's this concept of natural experiments that is uh hindi mo siya sineta pero nangyari siya uh, and then then you collect data and then you can say na na, na yun yung cause um pero usually nga hindi siya ganun ka clean kasi natural experiment lang siya for example it just so happened na na this school closed and this school did not close and then you can see what happened diba or sabi nila south and north korea is a natural experiment because they're the same they're all Korean, but because of that uh, political ano, division, you see uh, very different outcomes. So interesting yung idea of natural experiment. That's parang one uh, realm or Google keyword search. And then the other thing. Hmm. Sorry, no, but I think, I think you, yeah, that those are at least two things. Uh, um, but yeah, if it's simple enough, then yeah, it's actually simple enough to actually do the experiment. See, uh, of course, hindi rin siya simple kasi nga, andami, parang then you have to control for so many things, di ba? Um, pero actually, yun nga yung sinasabi nila na, uh, na, na, um, there's really a distinction between nga, parang hard, know, sorry, hard, pero di ba, parang the physics of, so, parang physics experiment. A physics experiment is really a physics experiment. Uh, reproducible, ganun. Versus, yun nga, parang a more uh, natural experiment. Uh, there are so many confounding variables or factors and tawag. Ah, naalala ko na. Ah, shucks, naalala ko na. Nakalimutan ko na. Ah, naalala ko na. The other thing is, interestingly, in cosmology, there's no experiment you're gonna do experiments because there's only one universe yeah nga, there are these questions that you can never answer diba? like are there parallel universes Para, um so uh, interesting another but we can do observations that's why yun nga, when we study the galaxies diba? we study um how galaxies evolve the, the microwave background and some 
how our theories match are able to match these observations. So um, interesting because cosmology is a branch of science where you cannot do experiments, but you can do observations and uh, still do this exquisite kind of science. But uh, for things that we can control, like yun yeah, I don't know, yung corals, di ba? But parang you can, pwede mo takpan yung isang part, ganyan, kasi nga, it's within the lab. Parang pwede mo siya gawing lab set up and actually do an experiment on it. Uh, but not for the whole universe. Okay. Yep. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Thank you for answering po. Of course. <laughs> Everyone, for those who raised their questions from Zoom, um, we can, can we accommodate the last two questions from Facebook Live, Dr. Reina? Sure, sure, sure. Um, may we call on Catherine Infasis to ask the questions from the Facebook live stream? Last two questions. So you will read them? Yes, Catherine Infasis. Ah, okay. Okay. Uh, Nakamute ka. Okay, Catherine. Hi, Hi, Dr. Good afternoon. Okay. These are the following questions from the uh, Facebook account. With, okay. with account name of um, Lex and John, what specific physics, future studies, or involvement you're looking forward to delve into? Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. My physics research, yes. Uh, so yes, as I mentioned, we will, our group we will be doing uh, um, astronomy uh, topics. So for that, but I'm looking forward to parang getting back to that uh, field. Um, and the, but uh, parang closer to what I'm doing now, um, parang the my my um, what I'm looking forward to is actually. Uh, and this is parang high level articulation of it is parang going more deeply into um, the kinds of problems that we encounter in 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 industry um, but uh, having the opportunity to 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 go deeper and actually do uh, research uh, on these topics so the idea there is to um, um, yeah to find uh, Ideally, um, those parang those those opportunities to 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 synergize between uh, between um, the two um, the two worlds kumbaga. So um, it's a it's a vision palang, but I'm looking forward to seeing that uh, fleshed out over time. Okay. One more? Um, yes, one more. Um, another question from Ian Kitena. Is physics a formula about the possibility of life in some place in other galaxies? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's about the life, life in other, outside Earth, outside the solar system. Yeah? What can I say about that? Yes, bro. yes. Oh, yes. That's actually the theme of my alien ba talk series. Um, but uh, in a nutshell, um, there are so many stars uh, in the universe. There's so many galaxies, so many stars, and now we know that there's so that there are planets uh, also and those stars, just like uh, so. In a way, we're not special. So the interesting thing is that um, there are two possibilities. It's either um, um, when you calculate the probability that life would arise in the whole universe, uh, this number, diba? this number can be uh, one or less than one, and we just happen to be the lucky one, uh, or uh, that number could be would be a very large number, uh, which means that the universe is teeming with uh, life. Um, and I think there's a quote by um, Asimov saying that uh, these two um, possibilities are equally terrifying. 
<laughs> equally terrifying. So I guess yun yung parang interesting thing, diba? It leads you to two different possibilities. Uh, and then the invitation is to to sit with both. Uh, because those two, we don't know. Eh? We don't know. But those two can be true. Uh, we don't know. We don't even know ano yung probability of each. We don't know if it's more likely to be one way or the other. Uh, but um, it's interesting diba, that, that both can be can be true. So Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you again thank you for that question. Yeah. Oh, thank, thank you. Us. Thank you so much. Um maybe we can we can just wrap up our uh, session proper with a response from, from Professor Sherwin Kopida. Hello? Hello? Yes, Professor. Right. Uh, so we would like to thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Reina. Hello? Hello? Your Hello? Am I audible now? Okay. So we would like to thank you so much for your time in indulging us uh, with your Life's journey, Doc Reina, for this afternoon's uh, physics uh, meetup. Uh, I would say we are so blessed and privileged to have crossed paths with you to virtually meet and interact with a renowned physicist who was affiliated with Einstein, an icon in physics and science. Uh, I gained I listed or I noted five C's as uh, in, within the whole duration of our physics meetup. First was the chart, first C, your life's journey. And we had a glimpse of your own life. It was actually very inspiring. Uh, visualization, uh, different, uh, actually a very unique and, and eye-catching way of showing us your life. Second C is your career, wherein you blended careers as an astro, uh, astrophysicist and a data uh, analytics uh, person. And soon uh, we welcome you to the academy as you will also join the academic community with an IP. Uh, third C is the cosmology, wherein you presented a simple chart of your output, which we believe uh, underwent a rigorous process until you came up with that seemingly simple chart, wherein you showed your work on validating probe, uh, pro, probe of gravity, E sub G. Uh, next C, well, fourth C is to continue. Uh, we sustain our networks, our engagements. That is what I got from your, as you emphasize, are how you ended up with uh, good mentors, great mentors that link you to another career opportunity and you move into uh, further into your uh, interest in astrophysics and as a data scientist. And the last C, I suppose, is the challenge for us. I believe it is high time that we can potentially look into the possibility of venturing into a research with regards to the experiences and impacts of our physics meetups from the perspective of the speakers, of our speakers that we had in the previous meetups, our participants and our organizers from the BPS with the data that we have, I believe uh, we have network already and within this community, we can explore the prospect of producing a research from this endeavor uh, on the social research, I suppose. Finally, the last C, uh, I think I added another C and that's congratulations to BPS, the Bukinan Physics Society, the Physics Department and to Doc Reina Reyes. So that would be all. Yeah, Dr. Reina, would you like to say something? Your... Oh, thank you. That's brilliant, brilliant uh, recapitulation. Uh, salamat, and I'm glad that uh, the the things I know came across, 
and um, I'm sure uh, different people have also parang picked up on different things. So thank you for the opportunity and uh, actually the luxury of time that we're able to uh, to cover many things and uh, interactions as well. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Reina. Thank you. Um, we can close now our physics meetup with a message from the chairperson of the physics department, Vian. I'd like to invite Vian. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Mm -hmm. I'd like to share the sessions and adventures we had prior to this meetup uh, intended for those of you who are just uh, new to join us. As you may know, uh, the Physics Department of Central Mindanao University initiated this online physics meetup, a series of online conversations with invited experts in the different fields of physics in coordination with the Bukidnon Physics Society. Our goal is to bring international experts within the reach of college and high school physics teachers, students, and enthusiasts in Bukidnon and the rural areas of Mindanao and the entire uh, Philippines. We already had seven uh, successful sessions, one with an astrophysicist in the name of Ms. Priscilla Moneki from Carl Schwarzschild Observatory, Germany, where she tackled how astronomical research influence, influence our daily activities. One with Dr. Monica Kataria from Academia Sinica and the National Central University, Taiwan, wherein she presented the future trends of wearable and biocompatible opto optoelectronic devices. The following week, we had Dr. Uh, Eliezer Stretcho from the, from the Australian National University, Australia, wherein Dr. Stretcho discussed the frontiers in optics and photonics especially on quantum fluids of light and matter for future low energy electronics. Then we closed the month of May with a panel discussion to promote physics and its various career opportunities with Ms. Eileen May Trinidad Taibot from the Eindhoven University of, of Technology in the Netherlands, Mr. Anderson Birondo from the Electa Limited Asia Pacific, Hong Kong, and Mr. Gilbert from the DOST, Office of the Undersecretary for Research and De Development. Last June 8, 2020, we had Dr. Pelchito Rene Bagsikan from the Institute of Laser Engineering, Osaka University, Japan, who taught us the foundation and applications of terahertz emission microscopy. On June, uh, June 8, 18, 2020, we had Mr. Yun Xiao, a PhD physics candidate from Oxford University who introduced us to the latest trends of emerging photovoltaics of organic solar cells. The succeeding, uh, succeeding session discussed career paths and opportunities in theoretical physics, which was presented by Dr. Ian G. Vega, the 2019 Outstanding Young Scientist recipient and a physics professor at the National Institute of Physics, UP Diliman. This afternoon, as we continue with our online uh, physics meetup, we managed to invite Dr. Rina Ries, wherein she has shared her adventures of being a Filipina sci uh, scientist through graduate school and a career in teaching, consulting, and science communication. We are overwhelmed with the number of participants registering for this uh, session, we realized that our humble initiative would reach this uh, magnitude of participants. With the current momentum, we are fueled to invite more brilliant uh, speakers in the future. As for next week, uh, on July 31st, 2020, we will have a Ramon Magsaysay recipient in the field of education as our speaker in the name of uh, Randy Halastan, who will probably uh, discuss on how education help equip uh, students belonging to the minority or the indigenous people to become potential leaders. So I am hoping that 
you will uh, join us and support us to our next session. Thank you so much, Dr. Rina Reyes. Thank you so much, Mian. And thank you again, Dr. Reyna. Um, we hope to invite you again in our next session, maybe a little more specific topic on physics or something that you really love or passionate about. So thank you so much, Dr. Reyna. Um, Congratulations. Yeah. Okay, um, as we close our physics meetup, may I invite everyone to turn on their videos for a group photo. I'll just have this gallery view. Okay, we now have... Okay, so are you all ready? We will have three poses. So can we give the best uh, pose that we can give? Okay, let's have it five, four, three, two, one. Okay, another one. Five, four, three, Two, one. Okay, the last one you can do a wacky pose. <laughs> okay, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much again, Dr. Rina. Um, we will still be here on Zoom. If you can, if you wish to stay with us for a few minutes, you can interact with the organizing team. So again, Dr. Reina, thank you so much. And we hope to see you again. Yes, of course. Thank you again. And uh, nag I, I'm sorry I cannot uh, answer the chat. Um, but you know, I think the organizers will um, uh, collate. Uh, but there are some that were private to me. So uh, I, I, I can't reply yan. Pero um uh, please, you know naman how to contact me if you parang uh, and uh, I'm happy to answer. Uh, but baka, I think kasi pag na close na yung zoom mo, wala na siya. So unfortunately, uh, hindi ko kayo replyan here. Um, but yeah, we'll find a way. Yeah, online naman tayo lahat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Again, Dr. Uh, would you like to promote your pages again? Facebook. Oh yeah, on Facebook it's um, Reina Reyes, and then we will have common friends, and then um, Pinoy scientists also on Facebook and Instagram. Okay, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you again, and um, if you can, you are still um, vacant, available. You can still join us, but I will now cut the live stream on Facebook. Bye bye. Thanks for joining. Keep safe, everyone.